The Historic Preservation Alliance, HPA, of Colorado Springs is a nonprofit advocate for and supporter of historic preservation in our community. By means of this presentation, Patricia Doyle and John Haney, HPA board members will share information about the role economics plays in historic preservation. A segment at the end of the presentation will be devoted to the HBA and this nonprofit's outreach to the Colorado Springs community. For now, welcome to our presentation entitled, The Who, What, Where, and Why of Historic Preservation. Historic preservation is an expansive topic that encompasses the past, present, and future. At its essence, it's about how we as a society can honor our heritage and help save the best of the past for future generations to learn from and enjoy. The purpose of our speech is threefold. First, to provide a working definition of historic preservation. Second, to convey the economic viability of historic preservation and to share as examples structures and places within the historic fabric of Colorado Springs. And third, to explain how the Historic Preservation Alliance of Colorado Springs advocates for historic preservation in our community. But first, two of my favorite quotes. The first from Jane Jacobs, a preservation activist who lived in New York City's West Village and wrote the book, Death and Life of Great American Cities in 1961. I quote, once you demolish your built heritage, you are from anywhere, end quote. It was Jane Jacobs' theory that neighborhoods were safer when there were eyes on the street. That is, neighbors and, when applicable, shopkeepers who are naturally drawn to the life of the street and who, in the course of their activities, monitor the street. There is a sense of community. People know each other. The second quote will introduce you to the creator of place economics, Donovan Ripkema, and the concepts that form the base of today's presentation. Historic preservation, he said, is a responsibility movement rather than a rights movement. It is a movement that urges us toward the responsibility of stewardship, not merely the right of ownership. What is preservation? Whether one refers to people or to the renovation of landscaping and structures as depicted by these two photos, preservation is maintenance. One working definition of historic preservation, according to the National Trust for Historic Preservation, may include, is the property or site generally needs to be 50 years old or older. Although there are exceptions I will not address today. Should exhibit significant architecture, architectural design and workmanship. Demonstrate the work of a master architect. Is sometimes associated with significant events and or people in American history. May reveal significant archeological information such as that found on Native American land or the French colonial city excavated near the Arch in St. Louis. And of utmost importance, historic places provide a historical record that informs us about our culture, past and present. A few examples of architectural styles are Queen Anne and Craftsman. Mid-century modern, international style, each of the homes pictured above are at least 50 years old. However, people who like a particular style sometimes build a new home and replicate a style they like. An example of brutalism is the Geisel Library in La Jolla, California, built in 1970. All of the structures shown above are historic, what appeals is another matter. By means of interpretation, the Amache internment camp, located on the southeast plains of Colorado, provides the chance to have a conversation about 
and interaction with significant past events. Historic preservation is collaborative, changing, and occurs statewide in rural Colorado, small Colorado towns, and larger Colorado cities. Incentives are key. This slide is from a study paid for by a History Colorado State Historical Fund grant. Published in Preservation for a Changing Colorado, it includes historic preservation study data from 2014, published in 2017, that shows the positive impacts of historic preservation in Colorado. Briefly, total direct impacts of rehabilitation projects to owners who received state or federal tax credits was $3.9 billion. Total impacts from existing Colorado Main Street programs was $53.3 billion. A heritage tourist spending impact in Colorado was $15.8 million. The data shows a growth in historic site visits went from 16 to 21 percent. This data also shows that property values typically increase in local historic districts. Architectural styles are only one vital aspect of historic preservation. Let's now focus on some of the historic fabric of the Colorado Springs community to illustrate the 24 reasons why historic preservation is economically viable. But first, some background information. Place Economics, a Washington, D.C.-based development consulting firm, is internationally respected for its groundbreaking work in documenting the economic value of historic preservation. The firm, led by Donovan Ripkema, specializes in services to public and nonprofit clients who are pursuing revitalization and the reuse of historic structures. Mr. Ripkema's findings are widely utilized to convey a number of essential aspects about historic preservation that have relevance in towns and cities across the world, including right here in Colorado Springs. Through continual research in cities across the country, Place Economics has collected data to support the alignment of historic preservation with economic viability. What much of this presentation hopes to reflect is that beyond the beauty of the architecture or the sentimentality regarding the past, historic preservation and economic viability go hand in hand. It is what makes Colorado Springs and other cities unique. It is a message every community needs to hear. The number one reason visible on the screen and first evidence that historic preservation is economically viable is jobs. Rehabilitation and new construction projects, service industry and government and office buildings illustrated in these photos are located downtown. The jobs they generate within a community represents money that remains in the community. The second reason historic preservation is viable is because it is often the catalyst for downtown revitalization. The photo to the left underscores revitalization as reflected by new but unique construction for a coffee shop at the south side of historic Acacia Park home to Uncle Wilbur's Fountain, and the photo to the right, Sugar's, is a delightful restaurant housed within an early grocery store in the Mill Street neighborhood. Downtown revitalization blends old and new assets that attract tourists and residents alike. From left to right, the historic Alamo Hotel is next to the more modern building that houses a University of Colorado Colorado Springs Lecture Event Center. Across the street within a non-historic but more traditional Plaza of the Rockies building, one finds the UCCS Art Gallery illustrative of a newer downtown vibe. 
Uptown is the historic McAllister house built in 1871, now a museum. It provides a walk into early Colorado Springs history. The Fine Arts Center at Colorado College on the right is an Art Deco legend that has one of the best Southwest Native American and Hispanic collections in the United States. Tourism, reason number three, is and always has been important to the Colorado Springs economy. Many tourists come here to learn about the history and to experience our local uniqueness, such as that found in Alamo Park in South Downtown. Location for the former El Paso County Courthouse, 1903 to 1973, this beautiful granite building now houses our invaluable Pioneers Museum where exhibits and events, as well as the incredible sculptures within its park, provide an education about state and local history. To the left, Nick Vinatucci, the pumpkin man, hands out free pumpkins to local school children, while the Catherine Lee Bates sculpture depicts her enchantment with Pikes Peak, about which she wrote a poem entitled America the Beautiful. Later set to music, it has become one of America's most recognizable songs. To the right is William Seymour, representative of those African Americans known as the Invisible Americans of the Pikes Peak region. Mr. Seymour, a successful dairy farmer, was an important contributor to both church and civic life in Colorado Springs. As a tourist who does not like choices, the restored mining exchange building on the left is now Wyndham Grand Hotel. The quaint Victorian home, one of two B&Bs within the downtown location, provides a more intimate overnight option to visitors. The open air ridership, as embodied by the bikes and scooters, is an enjoyable alternative for those who want to see the downtown and surrounding area at eye level. Next are four to seven reasons for the viability of historic preservation. Property values in local historic districts have greater rates of appreciation than properties elsewhere within the same city. Foreclosures in even many less prosperous historic neighborhoods were fewer than in the rest of the city. In general, homes in historic districts do better when the market is moving up and fall later and less steeply when markets decline. But let's concentrate a few moments on number seven, small businesses, the backbone of the American economy. The use of historic buildings has a competitive edge since their spaces are often more affordable for small businesses. Small Colorado Springs businesses provide diverse yet important services and unique products. The large windows and interesting architectural details of the historic building on the right still has its Colorado tour sign advertisement of years past. This creates interest. The large pane window and colorful green awning of hooked on books and the multi-pane ribbon windows of the Old Town bike shop attract shoppers. All provide a sense of place. Other examples for excellent reuse and repurpose for small businesses are from left to right. The brick building that is now Mountain Chalet, which has historically housed a variety of businesses, a 60s modern movie theater, which now advertises a climbing wall, and small homes within a downtown neighborhood off South Nevada that have been renovated and offered as office space. Young businesses, startups, and event venues are found in surprising places, even within alleys. The exuberance of youth and those with an entrepreneurial spirit find less expensive opportunities for their businesses and event spaces within the downtown area. Reason number nine is jobs in knowledge and creative class sectors. Programs provided by the Catalyst Campus is but one avenue by which the entrepreneurial spirit in Colorado Springs is fostered. 
Located downtown within the historic Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Passenger Depot on the National Register, the Catalyst Campus is where entrepreneurial spirits are provided the opportunity to learn within a collaborative community. It's where the business community, the aerospace industry, and venture capitalism come together. Reasons 10 and 11 underscore the opportunities that are within historic areas and attract millennials who can work and live anywhere and want to enjoy amenities that are conveniently located within walkable cycling distances reached by a variety of cycling roadway lanes and trails, such as the Shooks Run Trail. Experts note that economic growth and vibrancy of an area are dependent on the young, well-educated, and talented who are attracted to these unique areas. The twelfth reason historic preservation is economically viable is that it provides density at a human scale. First, however, I hasten to add that by density, I do not mean the attempts to densify what has already been appropriately built and zoned single-family. From the inviting shop windows with colorful awnings and offices and residences above in the photo to the left, to the density of a bungalow court, to the former Giddings Department Store building to the right, now repurposed into lofts above and commercial businesses at street level, all provide a sense of community and encourage walkability. Reason number 13 is environmental responsibility. It is here I would like to emphasize two points. The first is a statement by Carl Elefante, past president of the American Institute of Architects, who said, and I quote, the greenest building is the one already built, end quote. And the second is from a report by the United States National Trust for Historic Preservation, which discovered through a series of case studies that, and I quote, it takes 10 to 80 years for a new building that is 30% more efficient than an average performing existing building to overcome, through efficient operations, the negative climate change impacts related to the construction process, end quote. Trails and open space initiatives, smart development, and surveys of historic properties are all valuable tools that promote awareness and lead to conservation of the city's historic built and natural environments. Reason number 14, smart growth, is a stewardship of the built environment and emphasizes sustainability, preservation, and reuse. Number 15, diversity, should emphasize the goal to raise the level of protection and opportunities for people in all neighborhoods. Let's pause a moment to backtrack and look at the 10 basic principles of reason number 14, smart growth, is more specifically defined by place economics. These particular photos show the transition of an abandoned industrial area in New York City, spearheaded by young visionary entrepreneurs who advocated for and worked hard to gather money and the support of big investment to what I would like to call visionary reuse. The High Line in New York City, Rhino River North and Art District, which is in Denver, a creative business area in Denver, which is another similar success story, although prices in this area are pushing artists elsewhere. As we read through slides 26, 27, and 28, please evaluate, then generate a mental report card regarding the changes you see or are likely to see in Colorado Springs. How do you react to these 10 principles? What do you agree with or don't? First, create a range of employment opportunities, mixed land uses, take advantage of compact building design, 
create walkable neighborhoods in a range of housing opportunities and choices. And finally, foster distinctive, attractive communities with a strong sense of place. Preserve open space, farmland, natural beauty, and critical environmental areas. Strengthen and direct development towards existing communities. And finally, provide in advance a variety of transportation choices, urban and social infrastructure based on population projections. And lastly, make development decisions sustainable, predictable, fair, and cost-effective. Encourage community and stakeholder collaboration in development decisions. And finally, cost-effectiveness in decision-making. Number 16, housing affordability. Affordable housing does exist within our historic fabric. Examples are the string of pearls behind the old Lowell School and a beautiful home in the affordable Mill Street neighborhood, a neighborhood that is in jeopardy of being gentrified. Gentrification is the process whereby the character of a poor urban area is changed by the influx of more affluent people the construction of less affordable housing, and the attraction of new businesses, which sell products and services unaffordable to people with lower incomes. Typically, this displaces families who had once lived in a once affordable neighborhood. Open land such as this in downtown provide opportunities. Such vacant land could provide the opportunity for more diverse urban planning in the form of mixed building types and more affordable housing in a neighborhood-friendly setting. Clear vision, planning over time, and incentives are key to this co-housing area and the businesses located on its western boundary. Reason number 17 is the first place of return. This home, located in the historic neighborhood in Colorado Springs, is representative of one style of architecture found on the west side in the Old North End, Shooks Run, Bonneville, and the Patty Jewett neighborhoods. In addition to their contribution to our sense of place, historic neighborhoods represent cultural and age diversity. Older buildings, such as one sees in the Perkins Shear Block, the Giddings Block, and the former Hibbert's department store have been repurposed into lofts, office space, and commercial businesses at street level. Former industrial sites, such as the photo on the far right, provide edgy artistic spaces that attract artists and their clientele. Tax generation is reason number 18. On the left, a once viable community business, Penny's, long closed, and the historic Alamo Hotel on the right became opportunities for investors to repurpose. Such benefits to the community attract more new development, such as these apartments that accommodate people who want a downtown lifestyle. Reason number 19. Historic properties attract opportunities for growth. Preservation of historic structures and increasing their value attracts reinvestment by the private sector and preserves the tax base. Formerly the roundhouse and maintenance for the city's trolleys, the trolley block now accommodates small restaurants on the Moreno Avenue block, just east of South Cascade Avenue, and has attracted further development such as the new apartments across the street and the need for a market on North Nevada. Reason number 20 is allows cities to evolve. To say that historic districts areas are largely frozen in time is untrue. Our community's historic fabric does allow cities to evolve. Two examples of this are the photos on the right where the historic fabric provides cultural value and a sense of place and where growth is anything but static. This is illustrated by Widener Field that occupies a former industrial site on the edge of the Mill Street neighborhood and historic Old Colorado City, a walkable area of unique businesses. 
on the National Register of Historic Places, Main Street in Old Colorado City beckons both tourists and locals alike. Spearheaded by David Hughes and Wes Colburn as financial advisor, the story about Old Colorado City's Main Street rejuvenation and National Register status underscores the power of leadership, creative solutions, and incentives. More information about this effort may be found online and in the archives of westsidepioneer.com. The History Colorado website at historycolorado.org provides state and federal tax credit information. The purpose of historic preservation is to promote awareness of our history and its value to the community. The photo on the left illustrates what can diminish and inappropriately densify and erode an historic neighborhood. Historic preservation does allow cities to evolve and branding conveys a sense of place. Over time, the Car Springs brand has evolved into two brands, now referred to as Olympic City and identified by the Olympic Paralympic Museum. The city was first known and for many of us is still fondly referred to as the City of Sunshine, a label grounded in a consistent reality because of the area's fantastic climate, the beauty of its landscape, and the healthful environment that supports a variety of outdoor activities. The Legacy Loop, as shown on the map, is what our city's founder, General Palmer, dreamed of as part of the Colorado Springs Park system. This 10-mile loop around the city, highlighted with red stars, is connected by the Pikes Peak Greenway and Shooks Run trails. The section outlined in blue is the area of Envision Shooks Run, the city's evolutionary vision for the eastern edges of the trail, which was also informed by an extensive public process. Reason number 21. Again, preservation is a catalyst. The trolley block's eastern edge on South Tejon Street between East Cimarron and East Moreno Streets has been the catalyst for new restaurants, private firms, and office space, and other small businesses. Nestled within this four-square block is the past, the present, and opportunities for the future. Reason number 22, homes to social and cultural institutions, museums, libraries, public art, public schools, and events are often located within walking distance of the Colorado Springs historic neighborhoods. The Historic City Auditorium and El Paso Club and the Historic Pain Chapel, now an event center, are examples. A major initiative to modernize and update City Auditorium and accommodate a variety of classes in the arts is underway. Reasons 23 and 24. The last two economic reasons for the viability of historic preservation are, first, Historic neighborhoods, especially those which incorporate historic districts, are more stable. Long-term residency is an indicator of stability. These homeowners often feel a heightened sense of responsibility to maintain their homes and community spaces and are more likely to invest mentally, monetarily, and emotionally in their neighborhoods. Vacancy is not an issue. In summary, place economics often addresses older historic neighborhoods in decline. On the whole, Colorado Springs historic neighborhoods have been maintained or continually revitalized. Caution, watch out for urban renewal, rezoning, and inappropriate roadway intrusions. Be aware, become involved. Smart growth requires attention, collaboration, and vision. The Historic Preservation Alliance supports efforts to maintain the city's historic fabric. Two such initiatives that this nonprofit supported were the appropriate renovations of the Jimmy Burns House in the Old North End and the Union Printer's Home, its preservation, renovation, and repurpose. The Historic Preservation Alliance provides many educational opportunities. May as Preservation Month tours, 
eight local tours and one special tour each summer, winter lectures, and the May Forum, which is educational. The Historic Preservation Alliance takes on challenges. The Harlan Wolf Homestead and 905 Cheyenne Road, for which the HPA has received one grant from History Colorado, will require two more grants to complete the renovation, add interpretive signage, and finally create a working space for the organization. The second but simultaneous challenge for HPA is bringing back the Tahama Spring Bridge and Pavilion. Yes, Colorado Springs does have a mineral spring on the west bank of Monument Valley Creek, just south of the swimming pool's bathhouse and southeast of the baseball diamond in Monument Valley Park. Because this project is so extensive and expensive, the process will have to move forward in stages. The outreach for funding will of necessity be comprehensive. Grassroots participation is crucial. It takes a community. Determine your interest, the amount of free time you can use, and the level of engagement you enjoy. Please contribute what you can, when you can. Whether privately or publicly, become involved in historic preservation activities. Join the Historic Preservation Alliance in one of its committees, attend lectures, tours, and other educational opportunities, become active in your neighborhood organization, engage politically, provide historic preservation support. The emphasis is on stewardship. Engage in historic preservation. It is helpful, fun, and rewarding. If you have questions, please contact us at hpasprings.org. Thank you.